Hello, and welcome to the PPJ series of channels. I'm Jay. This is my Projects by Jay channel where I will be posting my woodworking and DIY videos. I also have a Photography by Jay channel which shows some of my events and location photography, as well as a Playtime by Jay channel which for now will focus mainly on my hobby of fishing, but will probably expand as I branch out into other hobbies. I may also develop a Puppy by Jay channel which will be random videos of my puppy dog Asher. I'm a disabled veteran of the U.S. Army three years and U.S. Army Reserve five years. I'm also a retired registered nurse. I retired early due to health reasons related to my military service. Safety. I do woodworking because I find it enjoyable and relaxing. I enjoy making projects that my friends and family enjoy, such as these. I'm also planning on selling projects that I make so look forward to me opening a store in the future. At this time, I'm new to video creation, I have no sponsorships or ads, and I'm hoping to replace some of my lost income through PBJ channels. You can help me do this by smashing that like button, subscribing to my channel, and clicking the notification bell so you are notified whenever I upload a new video. You can also share this video with your friends. And you can leave a comment. Doing all this will help spread my videos by feeding the video sharing services algorithms. I'm hoping to post videos anywhere from like weekly to monthly once I get my process down completely. This is my first completed video. It's a cherry shelf with wood burn accents that looks something like this. This shelf is a joint project between my wife and I. My wife did the wood burning, which I will discuss further in the video. I asked if I could record her doing the wood burning, but she's less than enthusiastic about the prospect of being in a YouTube video, so there's that. This is a lengthy video, including the introductions and the um reel. It lasts about an hour. My own wife can't tolerate listening to me for an hour, so I doubt you will either. So I've cut the completed video into segments roughly 10 to 15 minutes each. This is part three of five. I hope YouTube does not slap a manipulation video label on me because it has been edited. Not to defraud the viewer, but because this video started as four hours long and I also removed most of my ums as well. Since these videos use power tools, remember safety first, hearing protection, eye vision protection, protection for your lungs, and your phone just in case you have to call for help. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and click the notification thingy because it feeds the algorithms. I hope you enjoy the video. So this here is going to be a shelf. It's going to be made out of cherry and it's going to have four pegs and this is we're getting a dog and this will be for the leash and the other accoutrements. My, my wife will have a, uh, when she takes the dog out, she wants to have a backpack, baggies for poop and stuff like that, and also some water. So she wants a place to store it, and that's what this is going to be. So I'll be making it out of this piece of cherry. So it's the next day, and I spent, I spent a couple hours already sanding by hand these little parts. This morning my wife suggested she would like to do some wood burning in the front of this shelf so I'm going to go ahead and sand one of those panels now so I can give it to her so she'll have time to do it. Uh, also what I'm going to do after I sand it is I'm going to measure out where the pegs are going to be. I want to just put a mark down on the board so that we know where those are going to be. I, I don't know how burnt wood will affect the glue surface tension. I really don't want her to put any of the burning where the hooks are going to be. Doing all that hand sanding is really time consuming. I have a couple of options for sanding. I have my sanding station and I have a one inch sander there will help me do some of these surfaces. I also have a mouse from Black & Decker, not sponsored, as well as random orbit sanders. The only thing I'm really going to have time to do now is to set up for the sanding. This is my glue mat. So I'm going to go ahead and put my sanding mat down. 
What this does is the stuff that you're sanding will stick to it. Unfortunately right now this is covered with so much sawdust it's really not sticking very well. So I am going to take this in the house and I'm going to wash this down with soap and water so it will stick to the bench. I'm also going to come out and wash down the bench because it's got some dust build up too. Hopefully between all that, that'll make this a non-skid surface again. I want this to not be sliding around so when I start using my random orbital sander to sand this, it's not going to be all over the place. I finished cleaning off my sanding mat. And so now that the sawdust is not on it anymore, it's not slipping when I push on it. So that's going to be great when I sand. I've got various sandpaper discs prepared ready. I've got an 80, uh, 100, 150, and a 200, and this is what I'm going to sand with. Typically, if you're planning on putting a finish on your wood, whether it's a polyurethane or whatever, you don't want to go above 150, 200. If you do, you actually almost kind of like start burnishing the wood and then the finish won't be able to stick to the wood. I do have 320 and 400 which I'm going to use after I put the finish on to smooth out the polyurethane. Light sanding with the 320, 400 will really make that poly nice and, and smooth. And you want to sand in between coats of poly. I'm going to stand in between coats of poly with the 320 and for my final coat do a 400. I'll, oh, this causes a lot of dust. So I am going to hook up some dust collection to this uh, if my small Rockler adapter will work. If not, I'll just use the dust bag on it and always a mask, always a mask. I got my hearing protection, I got my, my mask. Rockler has this dust collection system which is where I got this. One of the parts they have is this adapter for small parts and luckily this nicely fits um, on the dust collection port. I may have to hold it in place, but this is going to help a, a great deal with the collection of the dust. Let's go ahead and get some sandpaper on here. We'll start with the six. You want the holes to line up. All I do is line up a top hole and a bottom hole. And once you get those two lined up, it lines up pretty good the rest of the way. Let's get on our respiratory protection and our hearing protection and start a sanding. And more sanding! I have the shelf just kind of laid out here. As you can see, it's not secured or anything. This is how it's eventually going to be set up. However, my wife wants to do some wood burning. And so, as I mentioned earlier, and so since I want to make sure that she's not going to accidentally burn over an area where I'm going to put glue, because I think that could affect the gluing surface, I'm going to go ahead and take some of this painter's tape and just put it in the area where the corners and the pegs are so she knows this is the area that you don't do burning. And now she knows where not to burn for her decoration. Let's look at the results of the sanding. The one inch sander, this could have been a disaster. Even with the 120 grit sandpaper, it hogged away that wood, that cherry, like nobody's business. So I ended up not using this for the project. I used a combination of the mouse, the random orbital sander. I used some of the sanding discs that I curled up around pieces of dowel. I also used some of my sanding pad. I just wish that the, the ones that I have in 220 are a little bit softer. This one's really excellent for getting around curves and stuff. And this is what she's come up with. I'm very impressed. So I'm going to start working on setting up the pegs, the corners, and the top of the shelf. The pegs are going to be held in place with glue and screws. The corners, is, corners are also going to be glue and screws. I also still, on the back of this part, which is going to go against the wall, 
I have to put two keyhole for hanging it up. And the way you do that is with a keyhole bit for your router. That should be focused now. The bit has a cutting tip on the top and a narrow part here. What you do is you, and there's a small cutting edge right here on that narrow part. And what you do is you plunge into the wood and then as you drag it along, this part creates a wider hole inside than this, this which is surface level. When you get done, you turn off your router, you wait for it to spin down, then you have to bring it back the way you came and bring it out. So that's going to be one of the steps I also have to do. So I'm going to lay all of my locations out in the back first so I know exactly where I'm drilling and where I'm putting my keyhole so I don't make any mistakes. I've laid out where all my drill holes are going to be. Now what I've done is I've put a couple of these corner clamps on here. One on each end. And the shelf, I've lined the shelf up, back and top. I've used some F clamps to hold everything securely in place so they don't slide around. I'm going to sit this here on the edge of my bench, use a punch, and in places where I've already pre-marked where I'm going to drill, I'm going to put a divot. Now the other two divots that I have are actually going to be underneath these clamps, so I'm going to go ahead and put these screws in first. I'm not going to tighten them down too much because I'm just using these to hold my shelf together for right now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two more clamps. Actually I'm going to get these quick clamps. Put one here. this side. And now I can remove this F clamp. Almost had an accident. Move this F clamp. And punch this one. There's actually a 
madness to my method here. And the reason I did that is because now I'm going to take these clamps off. <laughs> 